Welcome to Algebra 1, Unit 7, Lesson 4-2, Solving Inequalities Using Addition and Subtraction. I'm Mr. Pi the Math Guy, and I'm going to be your host today. Our objective is, I will be able to solve inequalities with addition and subtraction. I work out of the Pearson Algebra 1, Copyright 2009 textbook. Here we have a property of algebra, the addition property of inequality. And the addition property of inequality reads, for every real number a, b, and c, if a is greater than b, then a plus c is going to be greater than b plus c. Here's an example with numbers. We know that 3 is greater than 1, so we can conclude that 3 plus 2 is going to be greater than 1 plus 2. And we should be able to understand that. This would give us 5 greater than 3. Here we have, if a is less than b, then a plus c is going to be less than b plus c. Numerical answer, negative 5 is less than 4. So if we add 2 to both sides of this inequality, negative 5 plus 2, well that gives a negative 3, and that should be less than and is less than 6. We can see that when we add to both sides of an inequality, whether it be a greater than or a less than symbol, you end up with a true inequality. This property is also true for greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So not only does it work with the inequalities, but it also works with the equal part of that. To summarize up here, oops, sorry about that. To summarize up here, we have, in other words, to maintain the balance, you must add the same number to both sides of an inequality. So when you're solving an inequality, trying to isolate the variable, whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. Example 1, t, we're going to be using the addition property of inequality. We're told to solve the following and graph the solution. Key part here that a lot of my students normally skip is this, the graph the solution. Well, to solve part A of example 1, t, we have p minus 4 is less than a negative 9. You should recognize that we're going to use the addition property of inequality to get rid of or undo this subtract 4 on the left. And so we'll add 4 to the right. Remember, whatever we do to the left of the inequality, we also have to do to the right. These 4s, they become 0. We often say they cancel each other out, leaving p isolated now. Bring down the less than symbol. And here we have to do negative 9 plus 4. And that, of course, gives a negative 5. So this is the solution. p is less than negative 5. How to make a graph of that? Well, it doesn't have to be anything complicated. And what I usually do is take the number that I solve for, negative 5, put that in the middle of a number line with three numbers on it. To the left of that, one number smaller than that number, in this case, negative 6, and one number larger than that number, negative 4. Here, as you should have learned in a previous algebra lesson, since this is a less than symbol, I'm going to use an open circle here. meaning that the negative 5 does not make this inequality true. If I put negative 5 in here, negative 5 is not less than negative 5. And since this is a less than symbol, I'm going to color in or shade to the left. I'm going to use green for that. So what this graph represents means that every number less than negative 5 is a solution to this inequality. For example, if I put negative 6 in for p, Negative 6 is, in fact, less than negative 5. So we can see that, in fact, this side does make it true. In part b, we have a minus 4.5 is less than 14.2. To solve this equation, or I'm sorry, inequality, you should recognize that it's a minus 4.5, and the opposite of subtraction is addition. So we'll use the addition property of inequality and add 4.5 to both sides. In this case, we have to line up the decimals and add. 2 plus 5 is 7. Put the decimal in our answer. 4 plus 4 is 8. And 1 plus nothing is 1. So the number part is 18.7. I bring down the inequality. The 4.5s on the left become 0 because 1's negative and 1's positive. So A is less than 18.7. Using the same method I did here, I need to graph this solution. 
So to graph this solution, I number my number line, this being the number in the middle, 18.7, one larger than that, well, I can, I'm going to go one-tenth larger than that, so that would be 18.8, .8, and one less than that would be 18.6. Less than symbol with no equal sign, therefore I'm going to use an open circle on the number I solve for, and then I'll shade to the left because it's less than. So there's applying the addition property of inequality and making the graphs. Here we have our second property of this video lesson, the subtraction property of inequality. For every real number, a, b, and c, if a is greater than b, then a minus c is going to be greater than b minus c. What this says is if we subtract the same number from the same from both sides of the inequality, the inequality is going to remain true. This part of it says if a is less than b, then a minus c is going to be less than b minus c. So this also works for less than symbols. We can, you can look at these numerical examples by pausing the video. It's good to remember that this property is also true for greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. In other words, when we apply this to solving inequalities, we must subtract the same number from both sides of the inequality to maintain the trueness of that inequality. Here in example 3t, we'll be using the subtraction property of inequality. We're told to solve the following and graph the solution. Again, it's going to be important to graph the solution. In part a, we have c plus 4 is greater than 7. This is really easy. It should be. Since this is add 4 to the variable, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. That gives us c is greater than 3. So to graph this solution, we're going to number our number line. And the first number is going to be 3 in the middle, one smaller to the left and one bigger to the right. Remember, it doesn't have to be anything complicated. We identify that since there's no equal sign here, I'm going to use an open circle on the 3. And since it's a greater than symbol, I'm going to shade to the right. Now, let me point out to you, if the variable is on the left-hand side, the symbol, the greater than symbol, points in the direction you should shade. That only applies if the variable was on the left-hand side. In example B, we have some fractions to deal with. We have x plus 7 ninths is less than 14 fifteenths. To do this math, we simply have to subtract 7 ninths from each side. Now, I say simply because this is the easy part. Now, if you're allowed to use a calculator in class, that's cool. But if you're not, you need to know how to do this by hand. We have to find a common denominator. And the common denominator of 15 and 9 going to be 90. What I'm doing is getting a common denominator here so I can subtract these two fractions. Now, I take 9 and I multiply it by 10 to get 90, so I take 7, multiply it by 10 to get 70. 15 times 6 gives 90, so 14 times 6 gives me my new numerator, so 14 times 6 4 times 6 is 24, carry the 2, and 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8, so that's 84. So now I can actually subtract. 84 take away 70 is 14, and the denominator is 90. And I actually can reduce that by a factor of 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 90 divided by 2 is 45. So our final answer here is x is less than 7 over 45. To graph this is pretty easy. If we go 7 over 45 in the middle, one bigger than that would be 8 over 45, and one smaller than that would be 6 over 45. Now that we have it numbered, 
you should recognize that since there's no equal sign, we use an open circle. And since it's a less than symbol, we're going to shade to the left. So there's two examples on using the subtraction property of inequality. In example 4T, we're going to be looking at some real-world problem solving. In order to receive a B in your literature class, you must earn more than 350 points of reading credits. Last week you earned 120 points. This week you earned 90 points. How many more points must you earn to receive a B? Take a second and process that. What I want you to process here is that there are three parts and a whole. A lot of times in math we have a part plus part is equal to whole relationship. In this case it's part plus part plus part has to be greater than the whole. Let me write that down for a minute and explain it to you. So this would be part plus part plus part is, is actually has to be greater than the whole. Now what are the parts? The parts are the points that you earn. In this case, you've earned 120 points and you've earned 90 points. The question is asking you, how many more points must you earn? Those are our parts. The whole in this case is how many points you must receive to earn a B. Let me write that word in red so you can kind of relate what's going on there. Okay, It's part plus part plus is greater than the whole. So Because to earn a B, you have to have more than 350 points. So what you earn, the three parts, has to be greater than the amount of points you need for a B. So if we can translate this now into some numbers in a variable, I'm going to replace this part with 120. That's how many points you earned last week, plus how many points you earned this week? 90. Now, if you've been taught anything in algebra, when we don't know a number, we use a variable to represent it. In this case, I'll use x. In this case, x is representing how many more points you need. For a b. And that needs to be greater than the whole, 350. These are the three parts, and it has to be greater than the whole. So now we just simply solve the inequality. So in this case, what we have to do is add 120 to 90. 120 plus 90 is 210. So we'll write that as x plus 210 is greater than 350. We apply the subtraction property of inequality, which says subtract the same number from both sides. In this case, I subtract 210 because it's being added to the x. So x, or how many more points you're going to need, is going to be have to be greater than one hundred forty points. And now thinking back on this, I think it needs to be. Nope, you need more than 350 points, so it cannot be equal to 350. So you need 100 greater than 140 points, so 141 or more points.